Sarah, let's talk about the US elections and specifically the Trump voter. Counting is still on and it's a nail-biting contest as of shooting of this show. And that's the important thing, as of shooting of this show. Joe Biden has eked out a slight advantage in the state of Georgia as well. If he wins Georgia, his path to the presidency seems pretty much certain, but it's still too early to say. Meanwhile, a lot of questions have been raised about the results and the voting. And a key question has been that, how do people still keep voting for Donald Trump? Now, we know that people voted for him in large numbers in 2016. At that point, people said this was an aberration. This was just a novelty factor. Trump was an outsider and that was the reason. But four years later, a pandemic later, an economic recession has happened. And despite all this, a lot of people still have voted for Donald Trump. So what really explains the mindset of people who have been voting for him? Who are his core base, so to speak, the hardcore voters who have turned out for Trump, despite all that has happened in the United States? And it's a very important question to understand because there are even some parallels maybe with the case of India as well. We talked to journalist Arindya Chakravarti to find out more. Thank you, Arindya, for joining us. So uh, it's been a chaotic couple of days, at least here. Have you also been sort of refreshing continuously on the New York Times and other sites and polls to sort of see what's happening? Yeah, it, you know, I prefer, uh, I always like to look at uh, what I would call the ideological opponent. So I, I have been refreshing the Fox News page. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, Fox News has been more aggressive in giving, uh, you know, these uh, uh, electoral votes to Biden than New York Times has. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, so there are, you know about the entire controversy which happened, I think, over right. uh, Arizona, which Arizona, uh, Fox right. News gave to Biden, even though uh, others did not. And I think New York Times is still not given. No, they haven't. In fact, a lot of liberal commentators have expected surprise. But nonetheless, uh, <clears throat> Trump especially when we look at the pre-election narrative that was there. Uh, of course, Trump was not expected to lose by a landslide or anything, but yeah. nonetheless, there was a strong expectation that Trump would not perform well. Of course, there's been the pandemic, there's been the economic uh, downturn because of the pandemic, his polarizing narrative, which, uh, and you know, his, obviously his crude statements, everything that basically, you know, there's been this, but in fact, considering that he's performed pretty well, it's still, today is the 6th of November, the election was held on the 3rd, and yeah. still we have not reached a decision. So are you surprised at what happened or uh, what do you think about it? Uh, personally, I'm not surprised because, uh, you know, uh, in 2016, I was, I believed that Trump is going to win. And uh, of course, uh, I believe that Trump is going to win based on electoral votes because mm -hmm. obviously um, there are places where there's a lot of there are a lot of number of people but not necessarily translating into electoral uh, finally electors right the reason i believed it was because of what the head of gallup you know the international the guys who do polls had written about the fact that americans have become poorer right. over the eight-year period a large number of americans have become poorer over the eight-year Obama administration period, and many of them actually are scattered in these uh, blue states, which Demo Democrats have traditionally carried, and many of them are whites who will switch to Trump. And Trump is, in a sense, someone who promises Pandra Lakh and Achyedin, right? So in 2016, and right. again, uh, I think this is a crucial difference that we also see in India, which is the sense that my gain is being restricted by a power elite which is holding on and that elite is actually on the east coast mm -hmm. in new york and maybe in california in los angeles and new york massachusetts and you know boston that's the in the us when one thinks about it and when we talk, look at india we talk about the lutians elite that lutians elite has kept india back and they are the people who support the congress and they are the people who modi has taught a lesson but trump was working on that rhetoric, in my opinion, and successfully and continues to do. Absolutely. Right. So in this context, I think it's still, uh, especially for uh, all of us to sort of, it, it's still a bit difficult to figure out exactly who the Trump voter is, because I mean, especially yeah. in India on social media, there's a lot of jokes. Uh, you know, there's a yeah. meme, memes are a ton of plenty. Of course, the same thing happens with Modi also. But nonetheless, it's also true that both of these uh, figures carry a very strong 
current support. And in Trump's case, we often tend to underestimate it all the more because of his personality yeah. that comes out. So could you maybe uh, take us through, say, what is the kind of composition of people who are actually voting for Trump today? So obviously this is based on the exit polls that were done in 2016 and now in 2020. Uh, if you look at it broadly, and the, I'm looking at the 2020 exit polls, it's mm -hmm. uh, going to be updated as it goes on. And we right. know that uh, Trump's vote has been higher than what the exit polls had predicted initially. Mm -hmm. But let's just look at the uh, numbers and we'll see that uh, the core of Trump's vote continues to be whites, right? If you look at uh, white people who make up about 65% of the voters in, uh, and these exclude the, um, the Latin, Latino or the Hispanic whites. There is a category of Hispanic, Latino, whites who are not counted. If you take all of that, then uh, uh, the population of white people in the US is close to 70, 71%, right. but you remove that and then you get about 65, 60, to 6,300 in terms of turnout and registration of voting, because that's also a crucial thing in the US. Whites account for about 64, 65%. So that's what the uh, thing looks like. And there, Trump has an overwhelming majority of about 57%. Right. Now, the interesting thing to me is that uh, whites we know are the people who uh, earn more in the US. They are the people who are the richest. And despite all the talk of you know, it's a, it's similar to what we hear here that oh, appeasement, Hindu yeah, Hindu khatre me and appeasement, and there it is affirmative action, yeah. and oh, this racism card this is all rubbish and stuff like that, and uh, that the uh, too much is being given to the non-whites. Uh, this is despite that we know that actually whites account for most of the uh, rich people in the U.S. and also most of the people who are. Um, graduates, right? So if you look at uh, the US, then uh, 44 or 45% of uh, people in the US uh, voters are graduates, right? right? College graduates, right? Out of that, uh, out of that 45%, um, about 66 to 70% are white people, right? You would say that that is more or less representative of the population of whites. So yes, that's true. But the, those who are non-college graduates in the US amongst non-whites tend to be very poor. Right. Those who are white but non-college graduates, a chunk of them are still not very poor. So if we look at the breakup in terms of, um, um, in terms of popular uh, earnings, mm -hmm. then you will see that uh, Trump's biggest support base comes from those who earn more than $100,000 a year. Now, $100,000 a year works out to about, uh, I think, 75 lakh rupees a year uh, in Indian money. Uh, but if we work it out in terms of what that can buy in the US and compare that, even then it's about 22, 25 lakhs a year. So that's, right. and uh, that in India, that is equivalent to a two lakh uh, per month salary, which we mm -hmm. know is, even in India, in India would be a high salary. And at 200,000, that goes to four, an equivalent of four lakhs a month salary, right? I'm not taking the actual dollar exchange rate. I'm taking what is called purchasing power, purchasing power parity, power. Yeah. What, yeah. what can be bought in it. Yeah. So that's the story that the rich whites, but I think uh, Prashant, there's a story hidden inside that as well. And that probably to me is the key of uh, Trump's support, that hidden story. I also, uh, could you elaborate on that as well? Yeah, as uh, you know, the point is that if one looks at uh, two things, one is the college graduate versus the non-college graduate ah. white, right? So uh, obviously those who are college graduates uh, generally tend to be uh, people from better, richer families mm -hmm. with uh, better access uh, to resources, yeah. maybe even able to take student loans easier than others can. So the family has a uh, better credit score, which is an important thing in the US. Now, uh, here's the thing that if you look at white college graduates, I told you that amongst white people, uh, Trump clearly has a lead. He has a 57% uh, uh, voter uh, support amongst white people and right. uh, Biden gets only 42%, which is dramatically different from their final overall vote totals, right? So if you look at white college graduates, there, 
both are equal. So Trump and Biden have an equal support. So look at it. Overall, whites, Trump has a huge ga uh, gap, right? A 15 right. point gap. But as soon as you come to graduate college graduates, who are about 31% or half, about half of all the whites, about I'll say 45 odd percent of white voters or um, college graduates. So they're, they're e even Stevens. But as soon as you go to white non-college non -college graduates, graduates, those right. who have not gone to college, haven't finished college, then there's a dramatic difference. Two thirds of those voters, Prashant, white voters who have not gone to college, vote for Trump. Right. And that translates also into income levels, right? Mm -hmm. Because I said that uh, if you look at it, if you look at the blunt numbers, then anyone who earns more than $100,000 is more likely to vote for uh, Trump than for Biden, which means right. that the rich are more conservative. They don't want to pay taxes and stuff like that, which is what conservatives always promise. That's what uh, the Republican Party promises. It uh, opposes giving uh, subsidies to the poor. So that is also something that the rich would like. And therefore, we would assume that that is the kind of support that he gets. But as soon as we break it up between the rich, those in Indian terms, again, I remind the viewers, I don't mean Indian terms that I try translate a, rupee, a dollar into rupees. I'm taking rupee into uh, what a dollar can buy and what rupee, rupee can yeah. buy in real terms. It's just purchasing power parity. In Indian terms, if we take those who earn between 2 lakh rupees a month to 4 lakh rupees a month, which is rich people in India and pretty rich in the US, well-to-do people in India. Uh, amongst them, uh, Trump has a clear, clear uh, greater support because there, again, he has 57%, almost equal to the overall white support he gets, 57% right. of support. Right. Uh, and Biden has only 41%. But as soon as you cross the threshold of that $200,000, which is 4 lakh approximately in Indian terms, 4 lakh rupees a month or more, in absolute dollar terms, $200,000 would work out to about 1.5 crore rupees a year, so about 12 lakh rupees in dollar terms per month or more. There, Biden is actually ahead. Right, right. So the, super, the sudden, super rich are basically uh, do tend yes. to go for Biden, yes. So here's the thing, the super rich, the 7% super rich are probably in your East Coast states, in California, sitting there, they don't like Trump. Right. They are still with, they want to support the Democrats. And it would be interesting to see what has happened compared to last year, mm -hmm. uh, last uh, election here. So this is a crucial gap that we see. And in fact, there's a lot of research on the uh, fight between uh, the within the whites. So this is not only about whites supporting uh, Trump. Even if one looks at the breakup of those who are white Christians, most whites would be Christians or followers uh, or Jews, those who are what are called evaluate, and this you would probably be better uh, able to un explain to our viewers who these people are. Uh, these are the white evangelical and white born again Christians. So. Right. Uh, you know, amongst them, uh, and they account for 27% of overall pop, uh, population. population, which leaves about, I would say, about 38 odd percent right. as non evangelical, non uh, born again Christian whites, right? Uh, so if one takes a look at that, then again, it's broadly approximately about 40% of whites are. Uh, white evangelical or born again Christians. And these are more conservative. They tend to be in that Bible Belt area. Here, um, Trump and they're, all, and they're also very well organized, which is as important because yeah, they're very, the, so, yeah. the social and cultural bonds and the structural bonds that keep them together are far more cohesive as opposed to the more traditional churches which are facing a crisis, so to speak. Yeah. And in fact, that is why probably we see that uh, video of that. Uh, Lady, oh, uh, yes, Paula, yeah, 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 who right. and uh, I saw some new video in the morning where uh, there are these uh, uh, people who are chanting and outside a uh, electoral, <laughs> you know, accounting yeah, yeah. center, right? So e exactly, they probably yeah. are part of that entire process. And, as and, it's, and it's interesting because it's the same in Brazil also, where Bolsonaro's okay. victory was 
propelled very, very strongly by the evangelical bloc, which perhaps played one of the most significant roles in making sure he came to power. Wow, that is that is extremely interesting because uh, I think that to a certain extent, one also has a social reason for them to uh, go towards these kind of uh, you know religious cults, if one could call them. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So uh, if one looks at it, amongst those people, Trump has a seventy-six percent voter base. Seventy-six percent white evangelical or white born again Christians who are not those who go to traditional churches. Seventy-six percent support base. And uh, so if I look at all the whites together, who I said make up 65%, and I take that 65%, out of that 65 uh, odd, right, uh, if, we, if one looks at it, 37 out of that 65 vote uh, are voting for uh, Trump in any case, right? But out of that 37, uh, 21, 37, you take out 21 are actually these born again or white evan evan evangelical or born again Christians. So right. you're left with just about 16, 16 out of those. And there the split would be equal, Prashant. Yeah. So if you look at it, the split actually among those who are traditional whites, there, if you take the split, then you actually have a, uh, a, sp uh, a split of 16% to 21%. So the non-evangelical, non-born again Christian space that exists, Within there, even whites, a majority actually support Biden and they do not support Trump. So right. this is, this again, I, again, I, had, uh, I don't know much about it. I only have uh, a vague idea about it, but I would assume, again, these would be, uh, these would be whites in the traditional, more developed, uh, you know, in the East Coast and places like that, where the churches still play a role and right. maybe would, might not be active religious as well. Act may not might be believers. Well. Yeah. They might be believers, but they're not necessarily actively religious. Uh, religious. So this, these are, this is very interesting to see that how uh, the support is actually broken up exactly like India into those who have a belief or a grievance, not only against the bottom, right? Not only against those they think are not letting them rise or are taking away the pie and therefore they have not gained but also to the top. So right. there is this great feeling that there is this elites, this elite which controls everything and they are taking away. And exactly that is what, uh, 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 that is what Trump uh, played on and exactly. played on extremely successfully. Which is also and highly ironic considering his own background as a billionaire. Uh, Absolutely. Whether he's a billionaire is debatable, but as a <laughs> <laughs> big industrialist, a baron, a staple yeah. of that same liberal culture as well. He was associated with Hollywood reality shows, all that kind of stuff. And and he was uh, and he was a registered Democrat. Right? Exactly. He, as always, he suddenly even I think in 2016 when there was doubt about whether the Republican Party would give him the nomination, mm -hmm. and he was asked in one of the interviews that if you don't give the nomine get the nomination, will you uh, still fight the uh, election? And he said, I'll fight it as an independent right, right? right, right. so clearly uh, he has no real love for the republican party he knows how to get power and i think the interesting thing is that he has sensed and we see many strands which come together these are the when you're part of this entire process where you believe that there is uh, an elite which controls everything then you're more likely to believe conspiracy theories right exactly. those conspiracy theories also get amplified by the you know, the Paula Whites of the world or, or yeah. Trump himself, right? So these conspiracy theories that there are these people, there's a deep state which controls everything mm -hmm. and you don't know them. They're the Freemasons. You see a lot of these documentaries on <laughs> uh, on YouTube, right? There are these people who actually did 9-11 and they blamed uh, uh, Afghanistan for it. You know, yeah. there are the, all these things and they're being done by whites. So all these things come together. The belief in fake news, the ability to spread fake news, right? the belief in a strong leader, the belief that, oh, uh, WHO has uh, lied about COVID and this is all rubbish. Right? These all things are, I think, closely tied together. And there is a, what I'm trying to argue here is that you see a very uh, simil similar economic basis for the rise of the right wing in the US as in India, because 
uh, I have always uh, I've been uh, trying to argue that in India the main thrust I mean there is always there are alliances that are made but the main thrust the core of the BJP support base is the new elite the mercantile elite which had money but never had social capital it never had prestige it is the same thing that we're seeing in the US that there is a bulk of people there is a significant about a quarter or more of the population which earns reasonably well between hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars most of them would be whites and they support Trump overwhelmingly because they uh, seem to believe that they couldn't cross over to the two hundred thousand dollar rate because they didn't get a college education they yeah. looked down upon and the white uh, and the elites who who also uh, are uh, you know there's also this belief that the elites rule not because uh, uh, not just because they don't have the numbers so the whites believe white supremacists or those who are sympathetic believe that they do the elites don't have the numbers they get the numbers by bringing in people right. so they get immigrants in to create and they give them sops and they take our tax in and give it to them and these people then become they create, do crimes and all that, and therefore they the the elite gets repeatedly re-elected because they're they're reducing the space for the core American, which is the Bible Belt voter. And this is precisely the argument for the CA also, in some senses. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's precisely the argument for CA. Exactly. Right. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Sweet. Thank you so much, Anandya, for talking to us. This is definitely a topic we will keep coming back to, especially uh, the aspect around India as well, because uh, it, uh, the support base of the, Mo of the Modi wave too needs to be understood in a similar way. Thank you so much. Yes. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click.